Yo, what's up guys? It's Cosmos here and in today's video, I'm going to be covering the best competitive settings for Fortnite that will boost your FPS, lower your input delay, and make your game run a whole lot smoother if you're running on a low-end system. Just before we get into it, I'd appreciate it so much if you could drop a like on this video and subscribe if you enjoy, and please use code COSMOS in the Fortnite item shop if you'd like to support me further. And with that being said, let's get right into it. The first part of our settings we're going to be looking at is our display settings. You want to make sure you're playing on full screen instead of windowed full screen as as it will lower your input delay in game. Now for a resolution, you can either choose to play a native res or on a stretch res if you want to. If you do play a native, you get the best FOV and game quality and it will look way better as well. However, choosing to play on a stretch res such as 1750 by 1080 could provide you with a slightly better FPS. And just like the OG Fortnite stretch resolution, you'll also be able to have wider character models which will make players a lot easier to hit. And if you're running on a low end PC, using a stretch resolution might not be a bad idea because it'll give you more frames in game and you want to make sure you squeeze as much FPS as you can out of your system. So if you choose to go the stretched res route, here's how you can go ahead and change your resolution. You want to click your Windows key and type percent local app data percent and then click enter. From there, scroll until you find Fortnite game, click saved config Windows client and then you'll see your game user settings. From there, right click it, click edit, then hover over the edit tab at the top and then click replace. From there, type 19 20 in the find what box and then type 1750 in the replace with box and then click replace all and then x out of that and then go ahead and click Control f and then type 1750 just to make sure it's all set and then hover over file and then click save and then what you want to do is bring back the file with our game user settings in it and then right click the file click properties then tick the box that says read only and then click apply then click ok and now you're done the next part of our settings we'll be looking at is our fps you can just go ahead and set this to your monitors refresh rate so if you're using a 144 hertz monitor you can set it to 144 fps and so on and it said that if you're using an nvidia g-sync monitor it's better to cap your fps slightly below and if you would like to do this here are some frame rates you should set it to if you're using a 144 hertz monitor you should cap it to 141 fps and if you're using a 240 hertz monitor set it to 237 fps and if you're using a 360 hertz monitor go ahead and set it to 357 fps i can't show you how to do this in this video because i don't have an nvidia g-sync monitor However, I will link a very helpful video down below that shows you exactly how to do this. And now for our brightness settings, in chapter 3, the brighter the better, what you want to be using is at least 125 brightness on Triton Note 7, or you can even use 150 brightness on Triton Note 5. The choice is really up to you, but honestly, the brighter the better because it will allow you to see in the storm much easier, so I highly recommend you use either of these brightnesses. Here's the side-by-side -side comparison between using 100 brightness on no colorblind mode and 125 brightness on Triton Note 7. The difference is really huge and you can see much more clearly in the storm and it will look even better if you used a higher brightness. The next setting we have is our 3D resolution settings. Now if you're using a really low end PC you could benefit from lowering your 3D resolution to about 70 or 60 because it will give you more frames in game. However the quality of your game will suffer even more dramatically the lower you go. So try not to go too low or your game might look like a version of Fortnite if it was released on the PS2. So for those of you who are on medium to high end PCs and still want to benefit from the slight FPS boost, go ahead and lower your 3D resolution to about 85 or so because it will give you a slight FPS boost and your game quality shouldn't suffer too much at 85%. And for a view distance, you want to set this to medium. It's just a perfect amount of view distance for Fortnite Chapter 3. And for our textures and meshes, you want these to both be on low for the best performance possible. And then for our advanced graphic settings, you want VSync turned off, show FPS turned on or off, it won't make a difference in your FPS. And then of course, you want to have performance mode turned on because you'll be shocked to just how much this boosts your FPS, especially if you're on a low-end system. It is the god tier rendering mode and the majority of Fortnite pros use it and use it for a good reason. And now for our in-game settings, you want toggle sprint turned off, sprint by default turned on, sprint cancels reloading turned off, and auto open doors turned on. The reason we turn this setting on is so that when you're tunneling, you don't get stuck on a door if you happen to fail your edit. Even if you fail your edit and make a door accidentally, you won't get caught on it because we have auto open doors turned on, so it'll just automatically open the door for you so you can keep on tunneling with no issues. And then for disable pre-edit option, you can either turn the setting on or off, it's just personal preference, and then obviously keep turbo building turned on. And now for confirm edit on release. This is a bit of a controversial setting in the competitive scene lately because there are some advantages to having it turned on or having it turned off, and there are some pros such as Mongrel who prefer to have this setting turned off because it allows you to have much more control of your edits and have better piece control, and it also allows you to have more calculated plays because you can actually hold an edit and look around while letting go of left click. 
However, other pros prefer to keep it turned on and still do really well as a competitive player. So again, this is just another personal preference setting. If you'd like to have the most control possible, keep it turned off. But if you prefer to edit by only having to click your edit key once and then just letting go of left click to confirm the edit, by all means, turn it on. It's really up to you and your playstyle. For my playstyle, I prefer to keep this setting turned on. And for our HUD scale, you should set this to something relatively high so you can easily see where you're going on the map. Somewhere around 80 to 90% is perfect and it's not too big and it's not too small. And I personally like to keep my HUD scale at 80%. And now for sensitivity, it's one of the most personal preference settings out there, but here are some of my recommendations. I recommend 800 DPI in between 6.5 to 7.5% on both your X and Y axis. I personally found that using 6.6% on X and Y on 800 DPI felt fantastic to me. But again, play around with your sensitivity and experiment a bit just to see what works best for you. And for the audio settings, I have my main audio set to 50%, then the rest of the audio settings set to 0%. And then for visualized sound effects, you can either choose to have this turned on or off. Pros like Booga have opted to keep this setting turned on. Well, it is pretty good for helping you know exactly where enemies are and being able to spot some things like used reboot vans or people using Spider-Man hands easier. It is said that it can make your game stutter though, so I actually chose to turn it off for that exact reason. And I've been previously using the setting for well over a year. So if you're willing to sacrifice some occasional stutters in your game, by all means, go ahead and turn the setting on. But if you're already on a low on PC, keep the setting off just to be safe. Since this video is only about settings, I'm not going to be covering my key buttons in this video. So if you would like a video about the best competitive key binds like double movement and the best optimal key binds, let's go for 150 likes in this video and I'll make that happen for you. And guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it, please drop a like and subscribe and let's go for 150 likes in this video. And if you guys do want to support me further, please use code COSMOS in the Fortnite item shop because it helps me out so much. And with all that being said, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you all in the next one.